In this week's video, we are vaulting this airfield on IL-2 Great Battles. This was not a common vaulting session where I grinded out a bunch of kills on unassuming enemies. The action in this sortie was a bit of a slow burn, but mentally it was a very active juggling session. It played out like a chess game because I was flying on my own in busy airspace, and the fight really boiled down to me managing the situation and picking and choosing my fights. I think some really interesting things came up, and I believe this could be valuable for players to see and to compare to their own flying. I've edited this down so we could skip over the drawn out parts, but I will talk over what I'm thinking and weighing in my head as things unfold. Lastly, if this is your first time here, this channel focuses on multiplayer sim gameplay, so if you're into that, please subscribe. While I was talking during the intro, you may or may not have seen, due to YouTube compression, that there are two contacts lifting from the airfield, and my plan is to wrap in behind them. Unfortunately, flak burst near me, which gives away my position if they are paying attention looking at the flak. So my plan here is not necessarily to go directly at them, but to kind of float up behind them and to see what they do. Did they see the flak? If they did, then I'm not really supposed to go because I'm going to be engaging them directly over the airfield and they're going to be going defensive. If they haven't noticed me, then I might be able to get a quick kill and get out. The whole idea here is to not get bogged down at their airfield. And I have a lot of cushion via my altitude. And we can see here that they're not directly going to the front line and they're circling over the airfield. And this is going to be a common thing in this sortie. My guess, without too much context, because I literally just got in the server and flew here, is that there were a couple of other guys trying to vulture, here, and these guys might be on edge. And that's why they may have spotted me and are just ready to, to go defensive. So I'm going to use my cushion and I'm going to be paid. The smartest thing that they could do here is they could split up and climb in two different directions and force me to choose. And once I dive down on one, the other one should be uh, separated enough and to have gained enough altitude to be able to neutralize the situation and come pounce me, which is what I'm worried of. And that's why I'm keeping such a, a big picture. And we see that there's two cons uh, directly with each other and a third one that's also circling around. The third one is a bit hard to see. And again, I'm trying to keep a big picture here or wide picture, try to keep track of all of them. I wanna make sure that one doesn't scurry off and starts to climb up. But these two continue to stay with each other and I'm starting to think that maybe I can go in and try to take a swipe at one because they're essentially on top of each other. And even though the third one's not directly with them, he's close enough uh, Coal altitude and also in proximity that if I dive in and climb away, I should be able to to get away And again, I have a lot of cushion here So I could literally just because they don't have any altitude. I could just sit above their airfield and just look down on them So I noticed this guy is on the eastern side of their airfield while we have the original two that are on the south side. So they're doing a big circle, basically following each other's tails. And to me, I think I have enough permission, if you will, to take a pass on these guys. And these guys recognize really quickly that I'm diving in and I go ahead and pull off because I want to make sure that I keep my altitude. Gained a lot of speed in this dive and I want to turn that speed back into altitude because altitude is a cushion, it's an insurance policy that I have here. And it looks like these guys were carrying bombs and they pickled them as I was, or jettisoned them as I was coming in. So uh, even though I didn't gain any kills out of this, I at least deterred them or stopped them from hitting the front line so this is already kind of a win already and as I'm climbing up I'm making sure that there isn't a, a third party or anything else coming up to me and I'm gonna be nice and patient skipping ahead I kept climbing to the south of the airfield while keeping my eyes peeled to make sure no, no one was crawling up to me I've now returned to the area of the airfield and I'm beginning my hunt again and I'm hoping that 
people have forgotten about me. And while in doing so, I'm still pestered by this flak, which is giving away my, my position because the front line's so close. And while doing that, I notice that something's crawling up behind me. So as I mentioned before, I was worried that someone would be climbing away out of my vision and then trying to come back. I'm lucky that I spot this guy when I do because I still have a pretty comfortable altitude position on him. The key thing here is I'm not going to get tied up immediately next to the airfield fighting this guy. He turned away from me and I'm okay with that because it looked like he dove down but I needed to check to make sure to see what he's really doing and I was incorrect in thinking that he dove down. He just kind of glanced away. So I'm thinking I might be able to get a snipe on this guy. And I'm very careful to make sure that there's nothing else coming around. And I see there's tracers over the airfield. So like I assumed or thought earlier, there's other Luftwaffe planes trying to bulge the airfield. So now I feel like I have total permission to do this. Um, the other people that I don't see, that, but I have a feeling that around their airfield are probably tied up with that vulture who stupidly very went, like went in very low. One last check, and now I'm thinking I, I should do this while I still can. making sure not to overspeed too much. I want the nose authority and this 51 is turning into me. So now we're in a head on merge, but I have a lot more energy than he does. And I'm able to get nose on and he's not. And I'm lucky to get a, it sounded like a 30 that hit. So he's wounded. This is with the 30 mil. So he must be feeling it. And I'm thinking I can maybe finish this off, but never know with net code, so I'm being a little careful making sure I keep my energy and my altitude. And I'm keeping a glance of my speedometer because I want to make sure I don't slow myself too much here. Or slow myself down too much. Because the 51 is very good at, at, at a rate fight. So some light hits, big mistake here passing in front of his nose, and I get blinked a little bit here. So that was stupid of me. Um, I didn't get a really good hit on him and I still took the lazy way across his nose, which was silly. But I know I have a lot more energy than him and I'm pulling him straight up for a hammerhead. Adding in rolls to make sure that he can't get, he can't spray me. And before I completely stall out, I bring it back down and he's totally stalled and I'm dropping flaps down a little bit and a really clean blow across this whole plane. So this guy is definitely done, or should be definitely done. Um, and I'm just visually seeing to see. Basically now what I'm doing is trying to keep an eye on him to, to confirm the kill. Like, is he gonna bail out or not? I'm actually surprised he's still flying. Uh, I thought I would have definitely pilot killed him there. And I'm thinking that maybe he's probably going to be able to RTB and I'm not going to be able to finish him, off, should finish him off. And I might have lost the kill here. But we see he actually does bail. So great. One kill, clean. Well, not the cleanest kill. Uh, I did make that mistake of crossing in front of his nose and took a unnecessary plank. And I'm keeping an eye out to make sure no one else is coming. So again, like I mentioned in the intro, it's not like nonstop kills happening over and over again. This is a slow burn and it's taking a lot of thinking and, and trying to think about what they know or what they're feeling. The first pass that I took, the enemy was very cagey, basically knew I was there, flat gave me away, and uh, they were able to, to break off. This other guy, the second one that I just killed, he knew I was there also, climbed up after, after me, and then he decided to fight me with a very, from a very disadvantaged position, uh, with having almost no altitude, and I was able to just keep making passes on him. 
So the thinking here is I'm going to come in knowing that the enemy is KG and knows I'm here. Instead of coming in from the south, I'm going to try to wrap in around from the northwest. And that way, they shouldn't really be looking in that direction. And I'm hoping that I should be able to just sit above and behind them. And they just won't see me. Skipping ahead, I've kept an eye on the airfield and I've come in from a different direction. And I do notice a, I think it's a Spitfire or a Typhoon below me. And because I'm coming in from a different angle, my guess is that this guy doesn't know I'm here. And I'm constantly looking around to make sure that no one else in the area is reacting to me diving. Because if I suddenly see people turning into me, turning around, anything like that, then I know the gig is up. I'm making sure that I'm giving a lot of rudder input here to slow myself down to make sure I'm not too fast. But I don't want to go too slow because I need to be able to escape. And that's going to be a problem that I'm going to be facing here. Turns out it's actually a P-47. Very good angle. I should have given more rudder input here. And I do get a 30 on his wing. Was going a little too fast there, so I didn't really have as much input on my controls as I would have liked. But I do get a clean hit on him. And with that, I am looking around, making sure no one is reacting, trying to pounce me, keeping the, trying to keep the ball center on my rudder input, and trying to motor out of there as quickly as possible. And that's a worry. Not sure what that is. So I go ahead and give emergency power to try to get out as quickly as possible. I go ahead and climb away and then come back to the airfield to keep doing what I'm doing. So far, I have been able to repeatedly hit people coming out of this airfield without getting jumped. And that's because I'm taking a very slow approach, really trying to keep my eyes open. I actually don't really like bulging airfields, uh, like the airfields themselves. I usually like to do bar cap, which is where I sit between the airfield and the front line and try to intercept them along the way. Because the airfield is so close to the front line, it's not really possible, so I kind of have to bulge the airfield itself. And with the population of the server at this time, um, it, this was basically the only thing to do. So I do notice, looks like maybe two guys RTB or two guys climbing and one guy on the way to the front. And I decided I'm going to make a pass on this guy. Same deal as before, giving good rudder input to make sure I don't overspeed. This guy looks like he's maneuvering or pulling slightly. Maybe not, maybe he's asleep. So it's, oh, and then we see and I tried to predict his movement. I thought he was going to yank as hard as possible. And he actually kept a very lazy turn. So I kind of... I basically predicted his, his steps wrong. Again, same thing as before. I'm going to try to keep the ball center and try to climb away. And we're going to see how this goes down differently compared to before. I have spent a significant amount of time here. I've cut up maybe 30 minutes or so of, of footage of me just circling and, and watching from, from, from afar. And I'm basically at half fuel, so I've been at this for a while now. So this is just no surprise to the people flying out of this airfield. Here I've turned away from the airfield and my plan is to kind of wrap in from a counterclockwise route. I, I want to go back to the airfield and keep doing this. And that's why I'm taking this approach and just keeping an eye on things. And I do notice something behind me with some altitude. And there's actually two things. And I'm thinking in my head that maybe I should turn in right now and try to get as close as possible to them, but really high above them. 
and see if they're going to try to chase me with their nose and climb up because maybe I can try to hammerhead them right here. And I take a plank. Oh, and now all of a sudden there's chasers behind me. So someone has called up behind me, which I didn't notice. I was looking everywhere except for behind me. And I confirm it's a 51, which is, this is a really bad position to be in because 51s are quite fast. And while diving away, I noticed another 51. So now I'm in a 2v1 situation. I'm trying to knock one out really quickly. This was fortunate that this guy was right in front of me. This is a bad situation to be in a, in, a, in a K4 versus 51s because they're really fast, they can rate, um, and they can run you down. So my idea here is to dive away and see what he does. I check the front lines and I think I'm in our side of the territory. So my hope is to dive and to make sure he doesn't follow me and it looks like he's still sticking with me. And there's actually a lot more than I expected. So all of a sudden there's a lot of planes here. And I don't feel like I'm going to be able to outrun this guy or run away from him. So I'm starting to preemptively scissor. And this is really important because I am really trying to keep point of where his wingtips are. As soon as he really commits toward the scissor, I immediately roll back over. And I'm starting to drop down my flap slightly and my throttle to see if I can get him to overshoot. The worst possible thing for me is for him to cut his throttle and to drop his flaps because and then I, I can't do anything. It's just over. And I'm starting to really crank down into these scissors and I see that he's still keeping his speed. And now we're doing the overshoot. And I lost track of him there. I got confused by a shadow. And trying to complete the overshoot and he's slowed down and he's cutting into me and unfortunately I, I run into him. So. The scissor didn't go as well as um, it could have. I mean, did I t technically force the overshoot? Yes. Um, could it have been cleaner? Obviously, I, I ran into him, which was a huge mistake. Um, let's look back at, at what happened. This is the part of the fight where I realize I am doomed unless he makes a mistake. I'm out of options except to try to force a blunder from him. I foolishly did not check my six often enough and he was able to crawl up behind me. So this is my fault. My dive did not create enough separation from him, and now he's firmly in my control zone. I need to shake him off, and my plan here is to force an overshoot via scissor. Here's a key moment where I start my first roll and turn. I confirm that he is also rolling and pulling, and when I recognize that, I begin to scissor in the other direction. The idea here is to get him to commit, or I'm going to pull away in another direction. I confirm again that he has rolled over to follow me, and now I'm ready to go back left. I will start to crank down more on these and begin to move more laterally to get him to commit harder and harder. The idea is to slow myself down and hope his throttle is pegged. The best thing he can do is slow down or go high in a yo-yo. I have rolled back over completely and his wings are flat. I have dropped my throttle and, st and starting to drop flaps. I could be more aggressive with my flaps here. I commit very hard and really bleed off a lot while dropping flaps more cutting my throttle entirely and nearly blacking myself out. He's also trying to follow more here and I need to cut back over. He still seems quite fast and now is very close, but his speed is pointed at a very different direction from my nose. I am now feeling very encouraged that when I cut back over the, over, the situation will feel very different. Things are going okay, not great, because he has already rolled back over. I decide to chase a bit with my nose, which is going to cause a collision. Watching this back, there was maybe potential to try to slip out more to the right and try to get altitude and come back down on him, but I was feeling that I would lose this if things persisted for a long time. And now we're gonna hear my frustration from me when I crash. No. Oh. So this was the first time in many months where I slammed my joystick in a fight, which I have to say, it felt really good. There is just something really special about Warbirds that really puts it head and shoulders above everything else. The fights are just genuinely very interesting and it's great to be flying it again. I would like to say that my main takeaways from this video is that when you are in a outnumbered situation in Warbirds, you really have to think about what the enemy knows and is also expecting. Trying different angles of approach can help, but you can't overstay your welcome because at the end of the day, you can only look at so many different angles at once. If you found this video interesting, please consider subscribing. 
and I hope you guys have a good one. Thank you.